Welcome to the Burden and Blessing Podcast, a study and discussion forum on the truth of God's Word. Our Word of the Week takes an in-depth look at important Bible words so we might increase and deepen our understanding of God's Word of Truth. We pray that these brief studies will enable you to get more out of your daily reading and hearing of God's Holy Word. Welcome back to Burden and Blessing and our Word of the Week. We're glad to have you with us today. At the end of each church year and at the beginning of each new one, there is a theme of repentance, of God's judgment that's coming on the world. Today our word of the week is the word judgment that is appropriate both at the end of a church year and at the beginning of a new one. The word judgment is used very often both in the Old and the New Testament. And there are a couple of different ways that this word judgment can be used. It can be used in a broad sense of just an act of deciding a case, of having a case brought before an individual, weighing the facts of the case, and then ultimately rendering a judgment, a decision in that case. So the word judgment can be used in a broad sense of simply considering the facts of the case, or it can be used in a more specific sense of actually giving a sentence or a decision to the facts of the case. The Bible talks a lot about the importance of earthly judges and how they are to judge. For example, in Deuteronomy chapter 16, the Lord directs Moses to appoint judges for his Old Testament people. And Moses then goes on to the people and to encourage them to raise up or appoint judges in order to serve them in rendering verdicts. We're told in Deuteronomy 16, You shall appoint judges and officers in all your gates, which the Lord your God gives you, according to your tribes, and they shall judge the people with just judgment. The way in which that is described is important. They are to find judges who are to rule and render verdicts with justice, with just judgment. We have all kinds of examples through the period of the judges. The Lord raised up individuals in order to give direction to his people to render verdicts or judgments for those difficulties that were brought forth. We also have examples of some of the kings later on who rendered judgments for his people. In First Chronicles chapter 18, we're told about David, who when he was raised up as king, would render judgment for his people. We're told that David reigned over all Israel and administered judgment and justice to all his people. While these are important, the Lord also points us to a greater judge. He reminds us that he himself, as the Lord God, the creator of all, is the ultimate judge of all. David describes this in Psalm 9, verse 8. He, that is God, shall judge the world in righteousness. He shall administer judgment for the peoples in uprightness. Notice those words that we've heard repeatedly. Justice just uprightness those terms are all based on a consistent and never changing standard and that standard that we find in the bible is revealed by god in what we call the ten commandments that very basic foundation for right and wrong lays out our duty to god and our duty to our fellow human beings we're told that there is an ultimate day of judgment that finally is going to come not just before Moses or before David but all the world will stand before God as the judge of all. Jesus says to the people of his day assuredly I say to you it will be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than for that city. Speaking about the many cities around him that had rejected him as the Messiah. A day of judgment was coming The problem is that as we consider that standard that God will judge by, the righteous judge, the Ten Commandments, we all have a problem. Paul tells us there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none who understands. There is none who seeks after God. They have all turned aside. They have together become unprofitable. There is none who does good, no, not one. As we stand before that righteous judge, judged by his perfect and unchanging standard, we realize that we have all failed. None of us are righteous. 
Adam brought sin into the world, and by his offense, Paul tells us, judgment came to all men, resulting in condemnation. What we deserve because of our inherited sin and our actual sin is God's just judgment of condemnation. But Paul also tells us that there was one man who came who was righteous, and by his righteous act, the free gift has come to all men, resulting in justification of life. Yes, God in his justice does come to judge the world. He has judged the angels. He's judged the unrighteous world at the time of, of Noah. He's judged the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. But he also brings justice. And that justice was served in the person and the work of Jesus as our Savior. There is hope. There is hope because Christ has borne the judgment that we have deserved in our place. Paul goes on in Romans 3, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. There's our problem. But he continues, Being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God set forth as a propitiation, a full satisfactory payment, by his blood through faith, to demonstrate his righteousness, that he might be just and the justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus. God's judgment of condemnation against our sin was born by Christ. And as a result, God in his justice, being just, with the verdict rendered and carried out by Christ in our place, can declare us not guilty. God is just. And a day of judgment is coming when God will gather all people before him and judge them according to the things that they have done. Our only hope on that day of judgment is to place our confidence in the perfect life and the death of Jesus in our place, who has borne our payment of sin, so that we might be declared not guilty. And for that reason, as Jesus tells us, he who hears my word and believes in him who sent me has everlasting life and shall not come into judgment, but has passed from death into life. Thanks be to Jesus. We encourage you to listen for a new word each week on Burden and Blessing Podcast, where we believe and confess that every word of God is true. Until next week, be assured that God's word is truth and is more precious than gold.